So is there any chance then that the we have two non-stationary variables and we regress these variables and their term is not it is is a stationary so we have non-stationary variables that produce an error that is not uh, that is a stationary so the problem if it is not if the error term is not stationary as well so if the error term is i1 as well or is not i0 yeah so if the error is a stationary then we need to think about this so if we have in this case the error term is a stationary so we estimate this f first we obtain the residual and then we can actually check the residual how can we check the residual whether it is stationary or not we can just use the adf model the, the sorry the adf test the augmented dickey fuller test or any unit root test on the on this data on the on the residuals so if we have this combination that is i0 then this is something even interesting okay and this is what we're going to explain why now okay so wh where is the problem we have we regress non-stationary data producing non-stationary error okay this is a problem this violates the assumptions we make about in the classical regression model okay but what is interesting if we have really i1 data and there is a somehow there is a combination of these that can produce uh, i0 error term okay and that is which which is the uh, residual in this case because you don't see the error yeah so when i when i talk about the error here so we actually examine the residuals that coming from uh, the, the 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 estimation of that of that uh, model. So in this case, the if that is the case, then we would say that these two variables are co-integrated. What does that mean? So remember, these two are i one. So these two variables are i one. So they are non-stationary data. I one means that if you difference it once, it will become stationary. That's what it means, and that's what we discussed last last time. So, the interesting thing here is that, according to economic theory, we understand there is a relationship between consumption expenditure and and disposable income. So, as your income increases, then we would expect your consumption to increase as well. So, there's there's a, 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 a relationship between both. But what we saw is that both variables are non-stationary. So what we are interested in, if there is any combination of these two variables that will give us uh, a stationary or I zero uh, errors, that's that means that these two variables are co-integrated, or meaning they have a relationship on the long run, and that's what means. So if you think of how the variables, when you plot these two variables, when you think about yeah how these two variables move together. There seem like a long run relationship between these two. So there's a ki kind of long run equilibrium between these two uh, variables. We understand both they they both move with w are moving with uh, with time or over time, but still you don't see like some um, deviation. They don't really deviate from each other. They, there's no kind of uh, like strange behavior or like the it seems they are related. They are so there's a kind of relationship between these two. Sorry between these two variables in, in the long run. And that's what, what actually we know from economic theory as well. So according to economic theory, we understand there is a strong relationship between uh, consumption and disposable income. So that's what we are interested in here. So if we have, this is, this is the general case now. So if we have a combination, uh, these two constants here that can make these two variables, regression or error term or residuals that are coming from these two variables, uh, regressing uh, y and t, that makes this vt i0. This means these two variables are co-integrated. Co-integrated meaning that they have a, a long run relation uh, relationship. Okay, so that means they are bound together uh, by a long run equilibrium relation uh, relationship. Okay. They move together over time. They are related. They they have a long run relationship in uh, a long run relationship. Okay. So again, uh, is important the integration properties of of the of the error term. Because if this is I one, this this means we have. 
spurious regression, a misleading regression, if that was I1. But what we are interested in here, if we have a combination of this, that can produce I0, a stationary uh, error. Okay? What we see here, even if we have this combination, so the error term that is I0, so if we run this in levels and we find this combination that will make uh, the error term I0 or stationary, it's still it is likely that this error term will be serially, serially correlated. So what does that mean? Or how would we deal with that? So let's look at this, um, this model here. So the first one, okay? So in the first one, what we have here is yt depends on xt, yt minus 1, xt minus 1. So we could try to do this just to capture any serial correlation, to capture any effect of the lagged val values that went to, uh, that was captured by the, the error term to get rid of the uh, serial correlation. And we can express this one, rearrange this model, to make sure that we have only uh, stationary variables in the model. So how does that work? So let's just look at the first one. So this is exactly the same model. So what, I'm, what I did here is, this is yt minus one. And so you just imagine you've got another equation of yt minus one, and then you subtract yt minus yt minus yt minus one. This is what you're gonna have. And then you can uh, get this one from this one. So this is very straightforward because this is the change. So delta here is the change. So the change is yt minus yt minus one. Okay, so the difference between this time t and time t minus one. So this is the change in yt. And the same thing with xt. So this is the change xt. And this expression here, okay, plus, plus an error term. So what is the importance of this? This is what we call the error correction model. Okay, why? So the first part here, delta x, this exp uh, this explains the short run dynamics of the model, okay? Meaning this gives you the information about the extent to which current changes in xt influence current changes in uh, yt, or in other words, how the change in xt influences the change in, in y yt. So the interesting part is this this expression here. This is a very interesting part, okay? Which can be written also as, uh, this is psi vty, vt minus one. Why? Because this is the, if you, if you look at this equation, this is yt minus one, and this is the, uh, the right-hand side, and plus vt minus one. So you can, you can this, is, this is exactly what, expre that what explain the, um, or this is the residual from, from this, from a regression like this, where you have yt minus one on the left-hand side. The error term would be vt minus one. So that means, so this is exactly the same. So this psi and this expression is exactly the, the error term in t minus, uh, minus one, okay? So what is interesting about this? What is very interesting about this is that the value of this error term in t minus one, this expression, vt minus one, if it is more than, if it's greater than zero, that means yt minus one is above the uh, equilibrium value at t minus one. If it is less than zero, that means it's below equilibrium. So the value of this expression is important. It explain where we are from equilibrium, okay? So if the value is more than zero, then that means the value of y t minus one is above equilibrium at t minus one. If it is less than zero, that means it's below equilibrium. So again, what does that mean as well? So thinking of this, if we understand how the value of v t minus one or this error correction term explain where we are from the equilibrium, then if this is this is what we said last in, in the previous slide. So if that is the case, given that this psi is expected to be less than zero, that means if we are too high, so away from equilibrium, that means the 
change in yt will tend to go down meaning to go toward equilibrium okay and the other case if this the value of the this expression is less than zero that means it is below yt minus one is below equilibrium and that means we given that this again this psi is is negative or is mine is is um, less than zero is negative that means we will have will tend to move toward equilibrium so whether we are above or yt the value of yt minus one above or below equilibrium there is some tendency to go toward or to move toward uh, equilibrium and that is that is the uh, interesting part of this error correction uh, error correction model so what is interesting here again so this is is this i1 or i0 It's I0. So what we have in the model is I0 variables. Look, when we go back, do you remember when we what we said last uh, last week? To make uh, <coughs> a non-stationary series, to make it stationary, you difference it. So and that's what we did. So this is yt minus yt minus one. So this is the first difference. That means that this is stationary data. The same thing with xt. And xt and yt were like in levels, they are not stationary, but in this model, this form, uh, they are stationary. And that's again another, like something interesting about error correction uh, model, meaning that we can use OLS to estimate this. Can we, can't we? We can use OLS to estimate it. So the idea here is, okay, how uh, we could also include like we could extend this model because in this model we added only one one lag so we can extend this by adding more more lags okay so what you have here what you see now is when we have two lags so yt we have uh, t minus 1 t minus 2 xt minus 1 xt minus 2 and we can convert this so this is in level and we can transform this to the error correction uh, form. So what we have here, delta xt, delta yt minus 1, delta xt minus 1. So anything you see delta, that means short run dynamics. So that explains the short run dynamics. This explains the long run dynamics. So the, the very interesting thing about the error crash model is that you actually modeling both together at the same time. You get the short run dynamics of the model and the long run uh, as well. Okay, and that's uh, and, and as I said, you could you could always decide on on the lags. 